So yesterday, me and Esteban went to the junkyard. It's actually Easter today, by the way. So happy freaking Easter Sunday, y'all. But um, anyways, me and Esteban went to the junkyard and we picked up um, a couple of things. One of them was this intake manifold. Check this thing out, dude. Someone put like some hours into polishing this guy out. Also got the fuel rail too. But like, dude, you see that? We got two sets of runners back there. Basically, we, it was like the GSR. We used this vacuum solenoid to pull vacuum and switch some butterfly valves inside of the manifold. And that went from long torquey runners to short high power runners as the engine RPMs picked up. Very similar to the GSR, very similar to the B20A, H22A. A ton of engines like that use this technology, and I guess this Toyota did too. I think it's a manifold from a 4EFHE or a 5EFHE. I really don't know Toyota stuff, but um, I've been learning, and stuff, stuff like this pops up, and man, I just didn't want to see it go into the scrapper, dude. Like, someone put some real hours into this thing, and, like, low-key, I left this at the junkyard for, like, a good three weeks, and yesterday we went back, and that car was exactly in the same condition that we left it in at. But anyways, that's not what this video is about, y'all. We're actually going to be doing our interior today. I have all of my interior plastic laid out on the ground, and if you guys didn't know, um, I have a 1988 Honda CRX. As I've started to learn, my car actually has a lot of unique parts that it does not share with 9091 EFs. Instead, it shares these parts with that guy. Forgive my Yonke for looking like a total trash bin, but like, look at that, dude. So basically the way it works, y'all, is um, the 1988 CRX that was re released in America is pretty much the closest thing that we're going to get to real EF7s, EF8s on in the States. They're basically left-hand, especially the HF model, they're basically left-hand drive EF7s. And if you guys didn't know that door seat belt thing that is notorious on 9091 EFs, that's an American thing. The door seat belts were only done in America for America. And the reason why is because crossing into the new decade from 1989 to 1990, um, Ameri uh, our country started enforcing a lot of like regulations with imported cars. But going into 1990, every car needed to have airbags. As you know, EFs don't have airbags. That's why we have cool freaking dashes, dude. We don't have to have big ass airbags stuffed in there. But, um, what, something needed to be changed. You couldn't just have a 1988 CRX with pillar seat belts that you detached and didn't have to necessarily have on when you drove the car without airbags. That wasn't going to fly in America. So after 1988, we changed up the entire chassis, fattened up this pillar, started mounting the seat belts to the doors. And if you guys didn't know this, 1990, 1991 cars have um, something like this on them. It says emergency release for seat belt is located on buckle. Obviously, you detach the seat belt via the buckle, right? No, sir. Only in emergencies. On 9091 cars, you're actually supposed to leave the seat belt always attached to the buckle, and it's basically going to stretch the seat belt out, and you're just going to like slide yourself in here, okay, guys? And that was basically a that's basically a loophole that Japan used, that Honda used to keep on importing these cars after 1988. For me, 1988 is a special year and my car had to be a 1988 model. And um, I didn't know it at the time, but these are literally the best CRXs on, out there, dude. These are way better cars than 89, 90, 91 cars for so many reasons. The HF is the lightest model of all these cars. It actually features the same JDM bumper support. If you guys watched my intercooler video, you guys might be tripping out on what my bumper support looked like. It basically does not have a crash beam and it's just tubes. That's exactly what the JDM bumper support is. So if you guys are trying to run a JDM front end and you don't have that rare bumper support, instead of spending a million dollars, you could somehow find the rare CRX HF front bumper support. It's the same exact front bumper support. And basically the reason I'm telling you guys this is because every interior piece that I'm using is probably original to my car. I've only switched out like one or two things, to be honest. And a lot of people on TikTok have already told me, why are you putting all this effort into restoring this stuff, dude? Why don't you just replace your interior? Like I see CRXs in the yard all the time. So if you guys didn't know, all of your interior pieces have a calendar on the back of them. Um, our calendar is right here, and basically you're going to have four years, either, well, we have five years, we started at 87, and um, all of these little dashes right here are the months that your part was made. So if we look at this, dude, 
this par was only really made for 10 months between 1987 and the very beginning of 1988. Once we hit summer of 1988, all of our cars were honestly switching to the door seat belts. That's why we get a lot of 1989 cars that look just like 9091 cars. They have 9091 headlights, tail lights, door seat belts, all of that. It's because of this. 1988, true 1988 cars were really only produced for about 10 months for the United States, dude. And that means that this entire Interior is really rare dude really rare it's like one thing to find a crx in the yard but to find a 1988 crx in the yard with all of its interior in better condition than mine it's just ridiculous to like hope for that dude so i'm gonna take things into my own hands and restore my interior myself check this out at at some point in the past somebody sprayed all of this blue interior black and they didn't do a good job at it because as you can see it faded so badly so what I'm doing is I'm using a green Scotch-Brite pad. I'm basically just scruffing all of this stuff up. The, the Scotch-Brite is basically knocking down the paint. It's basically making this from like, you know, filling it to just being a smooth transition. Like this, it's all an even surface now. I'm not trying to remove the black paint because if you remove the black paint, you're basically just going to smooth all of this out. You're going to lose that OEM texture. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even going to sand out some of this damage. I'm just going to knock it down. I'm just going to make it smooth to the touch. You know what I mean? And that's it. We're going to call it a day at that. Because after we spray it with that um, color coat from Seam, it starts looking like this, boy. And like, whoa, yeah, this doesn't look perfect, boys. But like... This is so much cleaner and so much nicer than how it looked like two seconds ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up all of my interior in the seam color coat. It's gonna be looking like this gorgeous when we're done with it. And then hopefully we'll get it installed on the car today. Have you guys seen Midnight? You guys probably haven't seen him in a while, huh? Those are 90-91 rear interior pieces. Look at that, see that? They're only slightly different boys, but they are different pieces. And the extent of how things change throughout the years, I'm not too sure on. But like, I am staying true and using all of my original 1988 interior. Even my rear buckets are 88, 89. Looks like these are also produced for one month in January of 1990. And then we switched them up. I do not know how we switched them up, but we did switch them up because there are different. Then here's something me and Julian did not know. This is... SH3, SH4. This is a Civic fuse box cover. And this is a CRX one. Look at that. Very slightly different, but they are different. This one has a little bit of a scoop. And I was trying to squeeze this one onto my car because it's clean. And um, yeah, it wasn't happening. So we're gonna use our CRX one. We're just gonna scruff it up and paint it black. And this is honestly gonna be the very first time, boys, that I actually have all of my interior together. Like, all of it. Wow. This piece was only really produced for like three months and then it was changed? I don't know. I don't know. But I did put some effort into collecting all the 1988 pieces. And then this is just some water, soapy water. It just kind of helps to clean everything up. And you want to be light. You really don't want to put a ton of pressure into this because it's plastic. And not only that, it's 35 years old or going on it. So we're really just trying to clean it up, knock down any rough edges and make her feel nice to the touch. It feels really nice. As you can see, we're not removing that black paint, but we still have that texture. And she's also prepped. To clean them, I'm gonna wipe them all down with a microfiber towel, soapy water. After that, I'm gonna coat them with seam solve, wipe that off, and then we'll probably hit them with a tack rag just to be 100% sure. Now is the time to make any repairs that you might possibly want to make all last minute and stuff. Um, so check out these cracks that we have. Pretty gnarly, right? I've already used the plastic welder to repair this bit. Yeah, it still looks crappy, 
but it is now rigid and it is no longer flexible. See that? I'm gonna show you how this works. A plastic welding gun, basically I call it a hot stapler. Um, you get this guy and then you get all these little um, staples. That's what they are. And pretty much you just put one in there. This heats it up. It only takes a couple of seconds to actually turn red. Already starting to burn if you guys can see it. And once this thing is hot, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> you just press it into the plastic, twist a little bit just to get her in there and then pull it out after it cools down. Um, they give you these little snippers to clip the ends of them. But um, honestly, these guys are pretty dull and rusty and stuff. So I use my own snippers. So to repair this crack right here, we're gonna wanna press the plastic together just like that. And you need to be careful using this gun on like thin plastic, like interior plastic, because it is a very powerful gun and it will easily burn straight through the plastic very easily. I usually actually let go of the trigger as soon as I press the metal to the plastic. Seal it all up. Just did another one. Feel like I got that crack pretty well. A little weak at the top, but you know, that's just gonna be natural. Hell yeah. Okay, so we have all of our interior laid down right here on the car cardboard. I was gonna say carpet. Um, I've already gone through this with seam solve and I've wiped everything down one last time. I'm now gonna use my tack rag just to get any dust or debris that's been, you know, falling from nature. And after I wipe all of these guys down with the tack rag, if you guys don't know, tack rags are just little sticky towels that do not transfer stickiness, but they do pick up everything that they come across. So final wipe down, and then we're gonna spray it with our theme color coat. Boys, check this out. So I picked up this color coat from Amazon. It was about $19 plus shipping. And like Rita, it's a flexible coating and it's meant to restore or change the color of most vinyls, flexible and rigid plastics, carpet, and whatever Valor is. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but so far I'm very impressed with this can. It looks fantastic. Here is a piece that I already did on TikTok. And um, this looks basically OEM, if you ask me. And like, it was a blue piece. So definitely did a good job color changing it. Made it all very unique and uniformed. I'm sorry, it's already getting dark. Show you guys all this stuff in the morning. But yeah, let's get done. So the interior came out fantastic, boys. Like, would you know that this was blue a couple minutes ago if like y'all didn't see it? Like, dude, I know we're on wide angle and it's nighttime, so the camera quality is a little fuzzy, but like, oh my God, they look so good, dude. All of these pieces look so fantastic. Paint was super worth it. Paint wasn't even that expensive, honestly. That whole can of paint was like $19 plus shipping and like, Ooh, baby, like they're not perfect, boys. Don't don't think that this stuff's perfect. It is not. This stuff is like 35-year-old beat-up interior. I hauled so many engines and stuff in the back of this car. Like, it is not perfect by any means at all. But it looks freaking good, dude. Looks way better than all of that, like, black and blue cow pattern from all the chipping paint and stuff. And, like, another thing that I told, um, I forgot who I told this to, but I think it was Julian. The entire time that I was driving around in this car with the original interior in it, pretty much any time you touched really anything, like the A-pillars, the pretty much any interior, that black paint would flake off. My glove box was super notorious for that. That's why literally why I just sticker bombed it. Honestly, if I would have known about this paint earlier, I would have 
painted my glove box. But anyways, she's sticker bombed, so <laughs> that's freaking cool. But um, basically, I cleared out the entire interior of my car. If you guys don't know, for the past like two years, Midnight has had a bed basically in the rear tub of my CRX. And this has been like his number one resting spot at one point. He slept back here for like 32 hours straight. <laughs> and he loves my CRX, but um, I'm gonna throw my interior in now and I'll just leave like the hatch open and stuff for him and he'll probably actually enjoy it a lot more. Um, so I'm gonna probably just start slapping it together. What goes first? Let's do the triangles on both sides and then we could probably get the rear tubs in. Wow, dude, look at that interior. <laughs> we only got two pieces in and I'm already getting so freaking hyped. Okay, um, let's route our battery cables through here for now. So right off the bat, the black that we used is actually a lot different than the black that is stock. I don't know if you guys can really tell, but that's also 30 year old black and this is brand new black. So I'm probably gonna pick up some of that like back to black or any of that interior polish from, Har from AutoZone and probably gonna do the dash and the bottom of the door cards, see if we can freshen them up and get them to kind of blend with this. But all in all guys, it's looking fantastic so far and I'm getting hyped. Hey you guys, so I've been putting together my interior pretty much these past few days. Rear interior is done and it looks freaking amazing, dude. Um, I ended up doing my cargo box with some bolts right there. Those are actually riv nuts. Um, the reason I did that was because I just didn't have the clips for the screws and um, I had riv nuts, so I used riv nuts. <laughs> um, pretty much done here. We need the speaker brackets, like the little, um, plastic bucket things that the speakers bolt to. I need those for actually all four speakers. I don't have a single one, but we're not going to focus on getting a sound system in the car like right immediately. We're gonna focus on driving the car first. So um, let's keep going. I also got this interior on, the A-pillar interior. Um, let's keep on doing 
the rest of it. We're going to do this side and then I'm going to get my um, dash on. If you guys don't notice, I actually have my entire climate control, um, heater, vents, whatever you want to call them. I have all of them installed. I actually had to go to the junkyard and get this one from the recent CRX that we saw because mine actually was broken. This guy was not moving at all. As you can see, there's a door. Mine wasn't moving at all, so um, I actually actually had to go to the junkyard and get this, and I pulled my dash one last time to throw that in there. We also got the other two tubes in there. We also have our antenna for our radio, so that way we can go to the drive-in. Um, and yeah, we're pretty much good to go underneath the dash. Everything's all loomed up and ready. Um, I think I'm just going to scrap that final wiring video that I was going to force feed you guys, because it's literally just half an hour of me putting my wiring harness in i mean you don't need to see that i don't think you need to see that i think that's pretty boring and um this guy has power but unfortunately it's not moving anything like none of the vents or anything like that is moving at all so i hope that that guy is the issue and um yeah i'm just gonna proceed and we're gonna see if it works when it works crank so that's freaking awesome um this guy we have all of our parts fully bolted down got all the screws and clips hell yeah so now we're going to do that one over there but um i need this guy i need this little pin i actually lost my original one because if you guys don't know this car always had a broken one and the door kind of always just swung open on the passenger side my friend clayton sent me another one um let me get it out it looks like this. This is what the little actuator arm inside of there looks like. It goes on the door like that, and I guess that spring is what bounces it back up into place and stuff. So I stuck a bolt in there for now. <laughs> but, um, door works. Hell yeah. Next, and also huge shout out to Clayton for sending me parts. Because if I didn't include it in the vlog, he also sent me that center bracket right there that we never had before either. And I know some of you guys might not know this, but um, I bought my CRX as a shell. I bought this car with like pretty much no parts in it. If you guys want to see what it came with, go to the 
first video. This isn't even the original dash because everything in the car was spray painted black and everything had been sitting in the desert for like 10 years. So everything was pretty, pretty brittle and just in crap condition. A majority of this interior is new. Well, not new, but like it's new to the car. This dash came from Washington or Oregon, I think it was. I think we picked it up in Oregon. Go back and watch the videos and you'll know. Um, freaking the rear interior was all given to me piece by piece. Brandon gave me the top cover. One of you guys gave me um, the actual center divider. I got the box from one of you guys as well. Like, yeah, we've come a long way, boys. Anyways, I'm gonna get the um, door thrown back together. directions to a T. Um, this is the service manual. The only thing I don't have is the cover for the seat belts, but we now have our seat belts fully mounted the way they were mounted from factory. So if anyone has the little cover for these guys, 88 CRX, gray ones or black ones, whatever the color it is, definitely hit me up. I don't have them anymore. Um, so anyways, I deal with a lot of really annoying things in building this car, such as these little clips right here. These guys are one, really difficult to find, and two, when you do find them and stick them in here, they just pull right out. Like they don't actually lock in here because this is so worn out and crap. So it's been kind of annoying. My um, rear divider keeps popping off. So what I'm going to do is actually use roof nuts. I use roof nuts right here. Um, the front two 10 millimeters on my box are now bolts instead of screws. They're now 10, 10 millimeter bolts. Um, so I'm gonna actually do the same thing here. We just pop these guys in place and then we can use a bolt instead of a screw. This is a little Astro Tools rivet gun. Basically the way it works is you screw a riv nut right here and then you basically stick it inside of the hole that you're gonna be um, applying it to. So like in our case, we would go like that. And then I pull the trigger and what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna sandwich this rigid part right here. Ignore my thumb, I'm so sorry. But it's basically gonna sandwich this ribbed part right here together. And that nut is going to be permanently like clamped onto the actual sheet metal. Okay, ignore my crap camera angle. Take two. So I know some people may not like it, but basically now we have a bolt on cargo divider. See? And this is now way more secure than it was on ever before. That's cool. Why is that light on? I just had to push this guy in a little bit and now the door closes more flushly. See? Wow, we boy. Okay, cool. Um, we got an interior again. I don't know what kind of a mess of a video this was, but basically, if you weren't paying attention, we used seam color coat to respray the back of our blue interior black, and now that looks amazing. And then after that, we just got everything else thrown on. We got all of our interior up there to our A pillars, even got the little oh shit handle, got our dash, 
pulled out and then thrown back in. I did a lot of like tucking and wiring down there. I did, um, I replaced all of the vents because um, I installed the vents. Um, the vent I had right here, this little guy that, um, oh my God, I have an incense right here. I like incense, but um, this guy right here, The little latch was broken in there and I didn't know that until I installed it. And then I, I was moving this guy and it was just like, it was like freely moving around, you know? And when I pulled out the entire vent, I realized the cable, the little pin that it moves around on, is sheared off completely because it's just plastic. So we went and visited a CRX this weekend in the junkyard and um, it had that vent, so I took it. I also finally installed the vents that Dimples sent me in the mail. So huge shout out to the homie Dimples. I don't know if he still watches the videos, but two years later I got the vents installed so yeah now everything on our dash works I'm going to work on wiring up the center console and um yeah boys we're almost there like and subscribe um I think we're gonna do breaks next I don't know dude I got so many videos I'll post this when I post it if you want to redo your interior and seam color coat I definitely recommend it it looks really good um let me know how the blue looks because I might need the blue for the Yonke's interior I have a red glove box that I would love to spray blue if anyone's used seam color coat in blue let me know how you liked it send me pictures of it that'd be kind of cool but until then um maybe save an EF like and subscribe give this video a thumbs up and leave me some comments see ya